Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie, I am the introverted reader and today's video is going to be my uh, sort of 2022 reading stats and uh, stuff like that. My year in books, <laughs> 2022. So I have in front of me here my laptop and uh, let's just go through how I did in 2022. Now um, we'll hydrate first. If you have yet to hydrate today, please do so because we want to stay well and hydrated. So um, my goal for 2022 was to read 100 books. That didn't happen, sadly. <laughs> I, According to Goodreads, I read 84 books, which is still really, really good. It's still really, really good. And whenever I was looking back at all the books that I'd read over the course of that year, I was like, you know, what? I read a lot of really great books. Like, even though I didn't hit 100, because there were just some days, fam, where I just did not have it in me to read. I just didn't feel like it. So, that's on me. So, Goodreads, right here. <laughs> I need to change my profile picture on Goodreads, honestly. I'll leave my Goodreads link down below so you guys can follow me on there if you want. Um, So, 84 books read, 33,420 pages read, which, wow, that that's a number, isn't it? Um, let's see. Okay, so the shortest book I read was Trouble on Top by Billy Bloom. <laughs> now, I read a lot of Billy Bloom. I think I've read, I know actually I have. I've read all of their books now that they have out in the world as of this moment. Um, and yeah, they're just like gay, smutty romances that are, are like Trouble on Top was the shortest book that I read. So it's 107 pages. And a lot of them aren't over like any more than like 200 something pages. So they're really short and they go from zero to a hundred real quick. But like Billy Bloom's a really, really good writer and reading their books did um, help me get through like slumps like throughout the year. Like whenever I, I wanted to read, but I didn't know what, or I was just like, I just want something fun and stupid and maybe doesn't make a whole lot of sense and that is when Billy Bloom comes in <laughs> and the longest book that I read was Empire of Gold by S.A. Shackerbordy um the third book in the David Bad trilogy which as you guys know was one of my favorite trilogies of all time Goodreads says that this is 766 pages that is a lie this book is almost 800 pages like it is exactly 790 pages. So we're borderlining on the 800 page mark here. It's a whopper. But I I adored this so much. The David Bad trilogy is so wonderful and magical and so rich and intricate. And I have the novella collection out there, um, A Silver of Stars. Is that what it's called? I can't remember. But I'm so excited to read that. Like you've no idea to dive back into this world again. Like, oh. And S.A. Shackerbordy has a new book coming out this year, which I'm so excited about. So there's that. Um, like Goodreads always seems to get the page numbers wrong. I don't know why. My Speaking of page numbers, my average book length in 2022 was 397 pages. So I did read a lot of short books. Like I said, all of the Billy Bloom. And I dipped my toes into the, the romance genre a lot last year. Um... Well, I, I've been trying to. Um, I still need to find what other romance author I want to read, but and a lot of them are really short, but I also read like a lot of really big books. You know, like I said, like the David Bad trilogy and a whole bunch of others that we'll get to in a moment. Um, Most Shelved was Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo and over 1.8 million people on Goodreads shelved that as well. Six of Crows, love it, amazing. My least shelved, which set which only 74 people also shelved, was Sleep Over Takeover by Simon James Green. Now, I love Simon James Green. You guys know that. But that book is not my favorite of his. I'll be honest. I didn't enjoy it as much. I mean, it is a middle grade, you know, and maybe if I was a young child, I probably would. But my average rating, listen, see when it comes to my ratings, I feel like I'm too generous because it says my average rating is like 4.0 stars. And I'm like, am I being too nice? Like, do I need to be a bit more critical of in 2023 when I'm rating books? Because 
I, I feel like even if I don't like a book as much, I feel like if I give it a low rating, money offend everyone and everyone's gonna be like, how dare you? This blah, blah, blah. I like maybe some people will do that, but I think in 2023, I need to just be like, girl, <laughs> like this book if you want, but if I hate, if I don't like it or if I hate it, I'm gonna tell you. So I hope I hold myself to that, honestly. And I'm really happy to see Six of, Six of Crows there too. Like that is a five star, well deserved. Like that book's amazing. My highest rated on Goodreads was this, um, Heaven's Official Blessing by Mo Shang Tong Shu. Um, thought this is volume two. And this, this has a 4.81 average on Goodreads. Like, honestly, I don't remember half of what happens in here. I'm just not as familiar with this story. I remember reading it and I remember nothing going in. I need the live action dramatization of this to come out already so I can watch it and then I'll reread it again when I'm a bit more familiar. But I'm really happy to see um, to see an Asian author getting the praise they deserve. I think I need to reread this. I need to reread this series because nothing went in the first time. <laughs> um, let me see. My first review of the year was to our subtle and Dante dive into the waters of the world. Oh my God. This book, this book is amazing. Like I read the first one in 2020 and I, it changed my life. Reading this changed my life. And um, I just have written here, wow, just wow. Not a lot of books have a real effect on me, but this one, this one is written on my heart. And I feel like that's all I need to say. Follows these two boys. Aristotle and Dante and the first one is about them meeting and they develop a friendship and they fall in love and this one is always a continuation of their lives and their relationship and it's not just about it's not just about the romance it's about the two of them as individuals it's about their relationships with their families their friends it touches on the AIDS pandemic like it oh it's so beautiful and I saw a 10th anniversary edition of the first one that I really, really kind of want to get, but I don't know. If I see it out about in a shop somewhere, maybe I'll grab it, but like, beautiful, beautiful, so beautiful. So like, listen, I just need to, I need you to, I need, I'm going to read the opening line of this so that, okay. And here he was, Dante, with his head resting on my chest. As I felt the beating of Dante's heart against the palm of my hand, I wished I could somehow reach into my chest and rip out my own heart and show Dante everything that it held. Poetry. Poetry. Like, ugh. So, yes, let's get into 2022 books. So we have, um, so the, they're all here, as you can see. So I've got Chris Colfer, Tale of Sorcery. We've got Empire of Gold. Ari and Dante, Girls of Fate and Fury, all amazing books, five stars. Um, Girls of Fate and Fury, oh my gosh. Is Natasha Nyan coming out with a book anytime soon? Because I need more of her. Um, again, all the Brown Sisters books by Talia Hibbert. Um, again, I delved into the romance genre a little bit more in 2022. Um, I think my favorite out of the three of those might be Chloe because she's closer in my age and a lot of what she was thinking and feeling I kind of related to a little bit. Um, we have the Grishaverse. Um, I've see, I see Siege and Storm, <laughs> which I honestly, two stars. That, that was not good. Um, Ace of Spades, um, which was a book club pick. I gave that 4.5 stars. Um, Star Daughter. Mm, I think I DNF that one. Aroshan, The Tree of Wishes. Don't talk to me about Aroshan. Again, Billy Bloom. Again, and I read um, and three sapphic books that I read last year. Malice by Heather Walter. Amazing, wonderful. I love it. Sweet and Bitter Magic and the Deathless Girls. Those were two sapphic books that I was really, really looking forward to and they let me down. Like, Deathless Girls was supposed to be like... Oh, I don't know. Like, uh, it's like a telling of Dracula's brides, but they're sapphic. And Sweet and Bitter Magic was supposed to be like a witchy sapphic romance. Both of them let me down so hard because the romance was not developed enough for me. Like, I felt like they just rushed into it too quick. And yeah, it just felt wrong. Oh my goodness. 
another book that changed my life. Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. Me and Amy over book two with Amy. Um, Buddy read this together last year and I remember where I was at the time of my life when I was reading this last year because we were getting renovation done in the house and it got to a point where we had to move out for a while and I just remember not feeling all that great and we were reading this and at first I was like I don't know if I'm in the mood to read this like I felt like meth I got so close to messaging Amy and just being like girl I'm not in the headspace to read this but I carried on and it's now one of my favorite books of all time I love it so much like both me and Amy were dealing with different things when we were both reading it um obviously different circumstances but like we both resonated so hard with this and we're going to be doing more buddy reads in the future yes 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 we are because TJ Clune's coming up with a new book this year I believe yeah in a couple months I think oh wow and but like we both love this so much it's about this man called what's his name sorry um Wallace and he passes away and he shows up at his own funeral and he hears all these people all his like work colleagues and his ex-wife talking about him and he's thinking in his head oh I'm sure they have nothing but nice things to say about me surely I was I was a great work colleague I was a good husband and all this and they were all like he was terrible like he was the worst colleague he was so rude and his ex-wife was like he never paid any attention to me he spent our honeymoon working like he never like showed any like affection or anything towards me like he felt like just making money and being good at his job was all he had to do and all this and and then he ends up at this little cafe that you see well it's a tea shop pardon me I should say and uh it's called Karen's Charon's Crossing and he meets uh, this man they're called Hugo and Hugo is um this man who uh, his spirits show up at his tea shop and it's his job to guide them to the other side to help them let go of the baggage that's keeping them as ghosts in this world so they can pass on to whatever's next and it's so beautiful it's so beautiful I have this is the Illumicrate edition but I have a normal hardcover and I'm gonna reread this and I'm gonna annotate this to filth you you better believe you better believe anyway moving right along <laughs> We've War of Two Queens by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Love that book. Loved that book. I think I'm the only person in existence that's still reading that. Um, again, more Billy Bloom. Um, I have, again, more Grishaverse. Amari and the Night Brothers. Great book. Uh, Gay Club by Simon James Green. It's up on that top shelf. Another five-star read. All of the Alice Oseman. Um, the Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. Love that book. I need to read Atlas Paradox. But speaking of Alice Oseman, Radio Silence, another book that changed my life. Um, I did a video where I read a whole bunch of, uh, well, three to be exact, Alice Oseman books that I hadn't read before. I made a whole video. I'll leave it linked down below. I'm really proud of that video. And this book right here. Oh my God. So we're basically following this girl, Frances and she is headstrong study girl she's head girl at her school she wants to get the top grade so she can go to university like she's goal orientated and she is obsessed with this uh like youtube web show called radio silence um is that what it's called i think so <laughs> if i can't remember it's been a couple it's been a while um and she doesn't know who the creator of it is and she does fan art for it and then the creator gets in touch with her and asked her to do fan art for it and everything and alongside of that she strikes up a friendship with the sweetest boy on the planet called Alid who I want to protect with my life and if you've read Heartstopper you know who Alid is he's one of Charlie's friends in the graphic novels anyway he's not included in the tv show because obviously he has his own storyline but um Alid is the sweetest boy on the planet and Francis is amazing. I love their friendship. It's beautiful. And if you haven't read this book and you're a fan of Alice Oseman, read this dang book. It's beautiful. Um, and I also read, I read some nonfiction as well. I got Gender Euphoria, which is written by a whole bunch of uh, authors spread across the gender spectrum. It's lovely. Um, again, Six of Crows, A Lesson in Vengeance, delved a little bit into Dark Academia last year, loved it. The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang, again, um, five-star read, but given the state of the sequel 
to that book. I'm terrified to read anything by her ever again, honestly, because that sequel was a <laughs> Um, The Extraordinary Series by TJ Klune. Again, love that series. I've got Twin Crimes by Catherine Doyle and, hold on, let me see, Catherine Doyle and the other Webster. Um, love that book. The Merciless Ones, um, Girl Who Drank the Moon, um, Daughter of the Moon Goddess, Four Stars, Sunbear Trials, Her Majesty's Royal Coven, which is right there. Do you see the pink and yellow? It's back there. Um, the Vampire Lestat by Anne Rice. Um, five stars. Everything across the board. I'm going to try and go out today and see if I can find Queen of the Damned because, oh, like, I want to read the entirety of the Vampire Chronicles now. I do. I'm obsessed. I love this. I love this so much. Um, scrolling down. Uh, more Billy Bloom. And the last books that I read, um, The Monarchs by Cass Morgan, Daniel Page. Bit of a letdown, that book, no offence. Um, Amari and the Great Game. The last two five stars that I gave was to A Light in the Flame by Jennifer L. Armentrout. That was actually the very last review that I wrote for the year. I, I, and I just wrote, holy moly, I am shook. <laughs> and Bloodmark by Tracy Dion. Amazing, wonderful, gorgeous need the third book immediately. I tweeted that I had read Bloodmarked and I, I, I tagged Tracy Dion in it, but I didn't think she would respond. But I, I wrote out there and I was like, I just finished Bloodmarked and I'm not okay. And she quote tweeted me and was all like, oh, thank you so much and all this. And I'm like, ah, oh no queen, thank you. So yeah, that is my year in books. Um, I read 84 out of 100, but better luck in 2023. So that's it. That those are all my reading stats for 2022. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me put my laptop down. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I feel like I've been talking for ages, but um, like I said, I will leave all links to my socials, everything, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, my Goodreads. And I made the video I made for Alice Oseman's books and also the one I did for TJ Klune as well, um, reading favourite authors backlist. More of those videos are coming in 2023. I have two more authors in mind that I'm gonna um, do videos for, so stay tuned for that. Thank you all so much for your support in 2022. It means, it means the absolute world. And yeah, I feel like I've talked for long enough, so I'm gonna let you go. Hope you're having a good day and uh, all the best for 2023. So cheers. Bye. <laughs>